Firebird was created in 1910, and it was Stravinsky's first piece for the Ballet Russe. Diaghilev commissioned uh, a ballet score from Stravinsky um, with uh, Fokine to choreograph, and they both came up with the Firebird. And it was this huge instant success, and it kind of catapulted Stravinsky into the limelight. And then after that, other great ballets followed, like Les Nos, Petrushka, this whole, um, genre and era of this golden age of ballet was born and Firebird really was the kind of leading ballet that projected all of them into the, you know, the, the audience's uh, view. Firebird, in my opinion, is just one of the most magnificent ballet scores out there. And even today, a hundred years later, or more than a hundred years later, actually it's really, in my opinion, outdoing the contemporaries in terms of its relevance and its just inventiveness and its sheer um, magnitude in being able to tell a story. And it's really the music that um, inspired me to do it. It's just, uh, it's wonderful. It, it does something to a dancer and a choreographer that only music can do, and I think the absence of words is exactly why that piece of music was composed. So I grew up watching it, then when I got into the company, I, I danced in it, and it's such a magnificent piece of corps de ballet work, you feel like you've achieved something at the end of it. It's, it's just one of those ballets where um, it doesn't matter what the audience think, actually. There's a, there's a sense of community within it. it it's, it's a real kind of tour de force where the whole company is involved and the, the counts and the music is so fiendishly difficult that you, you have to apply as much mental physicality power as you do to your body. I think the biggest challenge for me was trying to get Fokine's version out of my head. Not forget that, but try and reinvent my own uh, way of way of presenting this piece of music and this story, making it fresh and relevant, but yet also honor it. In order to do that, what I had to do for myself was to go into these characters, these four lead characters that, that kind of take you throughout the journey. There were three main things that we knew we needed to include within this work, and they kind of stem from the story itself. One is a tree that holds these golden apples that Koschai um, grows in his garden and that the firebird is always trying to steal. The other aspect is we need an egg in which holds Koschai's soul. Um, he's immortal and he's put his soul in an egg. And then the other thing is we needed a, a portal as such for a mortal to enter into this um, fairy tale world. And we came up with um, this horrific tree that kind of looks like a, an oppressive claw as such. And then we put the egg underneath it so that everything is kind of protected and these roots are kind of growing around this, this huge egg. I'm very aware of the space that I have on stage and how I can maneuver the dancers around. If there's any big scene changes, musically how long that could last or whether I need dancers to enable that or if I need to defer attention away from a, an area that needs to be kept clear so you can seamlessly do a change. Costumes kind of develop at the same time, you know, and again, they have a, an effect on how detailed the choreography can be. You know, if you have huge amounts of fabric, what you want to do is use that to your advantage so that the movements have to swirl and incorporate that. The main thing that I tell the dancers in the studio with this is to remember that they are not human. They are fantastical creatures and animals. We have to think about avian qualities, wings, the way a bird sees in terms of its peripheral vision and the, the eyes on the side of the head, talons as opposed to feet or fingers, and the delicacy of a feather that is also on fire. It's quite a lot of imagery for them to kind of put in. Suddenly when you can see them processing this, their movement completely adapts and changes. 